you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe, do what you want. That's cool and peanut butters and uh, jet, whatever. Um, I'm working on a 2010 uh, Mercury, Mercury uh, Mariner. And uh, with this car uh, came in a uh, transmission problem. So I'll just give you all tips and tricks on how to get the uh, transmission out so it can be done in your driveway. Uh, it can definitely be done in the uh, driveway. And uh, what it takes, uh, I guess I'll just show you in a second uh, what I use. I use uh, the average uh, power tools, got an electric 3 uh ratchet that I do. Uh, I use as favorite. Uh, I use uh, a half inch uh, gun, uh, Harbor Freight. I do got my anchor saw ran in here. Um, I really didn't pull it out for a job like this, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, your typical three inch ratchets may use, I don't know what your setup is, but for me, uh, I use hand tools, I mean, hand tools and power tools, most of power tools make the job uh, a whole lot fast. Do you wanna know how long it takes to get the transmission out? I'm not just rambling going out of order, but I'm just trying to give you this info very fast within 10 minutes. So you wanna know how long it takes to get the transmission out? I don't know book time, how goes book time. It's been a while since, you know, I did it for somebody doing book time or whatever. When I do, uh, I've done a job in this particular car, I take the transmission, I can't even talk. I took the transmission out at least four times in a car like this before and uh, just it's a walk in the park for me so it probably took me uh, anywhere between two and a half to three hours uh, to get everything out uh, this is all with drive of course I'll show you in a second but let me turn this light on you gotta take down the uh, transfer case uh, transfer case run differential whatever you want to call it take it off of the uh, transmission exhaust pretty much uh, the typical stuff up top air box. Let me grab the camera and we just go ahead and do a walk through. Um, let me grab this light. Um, so got the engine kind of cocked like this because I got the uh, um, regular floor jack and a uh, block of wood underneath the uh, engine. Make sure you got something to comfort this too because uh, you will crack the pan. I cracked the pan on something before. One time I was at another car dealership, but we're not gonna get in that. That was years ago. It is what it is, but. Lesson learned. Uh, use something to comfort uh, underneath uh, stuff like aluminum or metal might bend. Then the gaskets are leaking or aluminum crack. Uh, whatever. Got it supported. I could have used it, my, my engine support bar over there, but um, this type of situation, um, I, I don't really need it. And I'm going to put another jack down underneath to be cool. Uh, did take out the air box, uh, as you can see. Uh, parts over here, like I said, I'm trying to speed through this. Uh, took out the battery starter, uh, the back mount, um, this little air box induction thing going on, battery tray over there. Um, left this uh, little side mount right there. Uh, what else? You know, transmission bolts uh, from the bell housing I always work from top to bottom, so I took everything out from the top. Shift the cable, um, this dipstick, uh, this yellow piece right here. Um, I'm grabbing this is still uh, in a car, it's kind of connected to like maybe some type of clip so kind of left that in there and uh took off the connector cooler lines um if you want to go over here let me show you if you want to know what else uh far as suspension wise take off your brake caliber i got the brake caliber zip tied to the uh, coil spring so that way it don't fall stretch the uh brake holes and i ain't gotta pay for no brake holes uh what else i did now uh took out the uh, axle um, here it is driver side axle right there and um, make sure let um, me put this down somewhere I don't know this is kind of acting kind of John acting dumb the hell is going on matter of fact what the hell am I saying what the hell is going on what, what the fuck is going on and I'm up here acting all nice for YouTube and not cussing and stuff so what is what it is so uh, this ABS wire uh, definitely make you make you make sure you get yourself some damn slack. Uh, there's a couple 10 millimeter bolts holding it in. Make sure it don't tug, or you will be experiencing uh, ABS lights and uh, whatever problem you just gonna be having. That's what's gonna cost you money. Uh, this little C clip, uh, as you can see right here. I don't know if you can see good, but there's another one placed in between here for the brake holes. Make sure you get that off. You get yourself some slack. Once you get some stuff slack, got the axle, the uh, center nut for the uh, axle out. Go ahead and um, tug it out, and you can get the axle out, no problem. 
So X got to come out. So same applies for the uh, passenger side. If we can go over here. I know it's stuffy in here. This kind of I gotta like clean up. I got engines. This is another engine job I gotta do over there on another car. I'll talk to you about that in a second. But uh, here's the intermediate shaft. Uh, intermediate shaft. If you can see these two holes uh, right here on the intermediate shaft, you have thir two 13 millimeter bolts that bolt up to uh, get some type of bracket that uh, goes on the back of like the transmission. So uh, that's important. Uh, get you. I said axle nut. Get that out. Of course, you turn. I didn't even tell you to take off your two uh, strut uh, bolts. Make sure you get that out, the nut and bolt. Like I said, caliper. I got this caliper hanging. Um, I got slack in the hose, so ain't nothing like stretching, nothing like that. Uh, this uh, ABS wire, uh, as you can see, let me put this right here. I got slack in here. I ain't got to worry about nothing being tugged or stretching, nothing like that. Uh, make sure you take off your, your, your splash guard, the shield for underneath the car or whatever, because you do need to rotate the crank to get the uh, torque converter bolts out. Um, I said the exhaust got to come out. You just got to take up, take down that uh, Y pipe. Um, I call it a Y pipe because it is formed in like a Y shape to me. I guess that's what you want to call it. Little down pipe. Uh, the O2 sensor. There's an O2 sensor on it. Uh, make sure you be careful. Do not damage it or not like that. Uh, my cross member uh, comes off. Um, I'm underneath. I got to store all the parts underneath the car just to you know make some space around here. But the cross member uh, is off. Uh, I said uh, bracket, uh, front mount. Um, I left the uh, mount on a bracket and just took the bracket off of the uh, transmission. Here's the bracket right here. Uh, if you notice this uh, front differential transfer case, whatever you want to call it, I, I, I really don't care to me. It looks like a uh, transfer case. So this is pretty much this uh, T case. Is uh, I left the dry shaft on there for a reason because uh, I felt like it was no need to uh, take it off and it gave I do have some type of flexibility and they don't even weigh that much. Um, all I got to do is like a nice little push up when you're underneath the car and it'll bolt right up, no problem. It got uh, dial pins. If you want to be Superman overachiever, go ahead and try to get the uh, dry shaft. Be my guest. Uh, sometimes they're pain in the ass because Russ be getting up there and shit. And you just be beating at it or trying to hammer in and, you know, get grease everywhere. We're not getting in there at all of that. I'm good. Hopefully, you'll be good, too. Leave your tie rods in. Don't be taking off the sway link. Don't be taking off anything unnecessary more than, you know, I pretty much told you. So, here's the transmission. Uh, this transmission, uh, as you can see in the beginning of the video, I did sneak it out in this wheel well. And I made, like, a uh, weird-ass turn. To angle it out and pretty much uh, that's what I did so I guess at this point uh, I'm going to take off uh, this bracket to uh, it's three 15 millimeter bolts and I'm going to get ready to load this up uh, in a car and uh, you know get this you know on a road so that way I can get out of here and uh, you know drop it off in the morning and that's pretty much it so uh, I'm going to go to the hopefully uh, this video uh, was pretty much uh, helpful just giving you tips on uh, what's needed uh, to get a job like you know job like this done if you pay attention detailed in the video if I didn't really hide anything that you know I, you know, that, it's no really no I pretty much gave you the like the line out I don't need to tell you step by step how to do a job like this because this job can be get very uh, uh, tedious uh, may maybe for like a do-it-yourself or for somebody like me this is routine uh, do this in steps and uh, just bang it out that's that so for me this can get done in a day but unfortunately it won't get done in a day because I gotta get it built I gotta take it back to the building gotta fix the issue get it back and then it just literally from the time I get it back it's gonna take me three to four hours to make sure everything's patched up correctly cool and Let's work on the next car because I got a 2015 uh, Jeep, not Grand Cherokee, but 2015 Jeep uh, Cherokee, and this one I'm going to be doing uh, the engine on here. That was the engine I displayed earlier. I'm going to be taking this damn engine out, and this uh, it's going it's going to be a pain. It's definitely going to be a, not going to be a pain because uh, I got the engine table right here. Going to use utilize it while I got it. I'm on borrowed time with that. Uh, it's 
gonna get cracking with that tomorrow and hopefully I can get the trans back I get this mercury out of here I did an engine job I was supposed to try to film something the other day but it was on a 2007 Toyota Camry bam bam that joint gone bam, that, we bang that joint out there uh, my man wrenching dread uh, he came helped me out for a few and pretty much uh, I was able to finish I was able to get it done it's, it's like started on at 5 o'clock got it done 2 in the morning but it is what it is. So I'm turning off on this because apparently I'm just running my mouth and I'm definitely going over my, my mark that I was supposed to stop. So I guess uh, if you got any questions, tips, whatever you need, advice, let me know. Uh, this is pretty much all I got for you on a job like this. So it can be done in your driveway, just patience. Uh, save yourself a lot of money. Save yourself $500. Save yourself $600. Save yourself $700, $1,000, $1,200. Whatever they're charging you labor on doing the transmission, I just pretty much just gave you a little breakdown. If you're mechanically inclined and you're kind of savvy with the tools, you're capable of doing this because I'm telling you you are. So I'll holler at y'all.